The story of Lee Hain Industry Berhad. It all started with a small company called LHF in 1985, founded by Mr. Chua Lee Singh. In 1996, the company has expanded, having more extensive premises and diverse activities with the integration of CTHH, EFF and MKK, where Lee Hain Industries Berhad act as a holding company. To date, they have five main subsidiaries and five associates under LHIB Group, each focused on their own specialized activities. The company is in the wooden furniture industry, where they are engaged in the manufacturing and sales of furniture such as bedroom sets, sofa sets, buffet, and many more. In addition, the company is also involved in plantation segment, which cultivates rubber wood trees and other investment holding activities like property investment. Some of the countries they sell to are North America, which represents majority of their revenue, about 91.5%. 8% comes from Asia, followed by Oceania 0.14%, Africa 0.14%, and the remaining 0.22% comes from Europe. For more information, you can visit their website at leehamefurniture.com. Overall revenue and gross profit have been trending upward, attributed to growing demand for furnitures, particularly their bed sets, office furnitures, and many more. Drop in gross profit in financial year end 2013 and financial year end 2018 is due to the weaker foreign currency against Malaysian ringgit as majority of their sales are denominated in USD. And not to mention, they also incurred a very high operating cost. Likewise, for their operating profit for financial year end 2013 and 2018, it is due to the lower gross profit and higher operating expenses stated in the previous slide. Nevertheless, operating profit grew more than 500% thanks to the higher production efficiency and better gross margin. Bumpy but growing profit margins due to the hike in operating costs and foreign exchange fluctuation. A noticeable impact can be seen in financial year end 2018 where margins fell the most. Unstable ROIC overall. The large drop in ROIC in financial year end 2016 is due to the high cost mentioned in the previous slide. Growing profit after tax, but it fell from financial year end 2016 to 2018. Nevertheless, they start to pick up again after that. On the other hand, Lee Hain achieved a great improvement in their remuneration to PAT ratio over the years. Very healthy cash to debt ratio. They have been in the net cash for 10 years and cash is growing. Another company that's generating great operating cash flow aside from Great Tech. If you have not watched my analysis on Great Tech, you can click on the I button at the upper right hand corner of this video. However, Lee Hin incurred a large drop in their operating cash flow for a few financial years, especially in financial year end 2020, where they decided to hold more raw material in anticipation of shortage and increase in material costs, as well as the deferred of shipment and finished products due to the global shortage of containers. Lee Hin has been very kind to their shareholders, paying dividends for 10 consecutive years, though the payouts start to decrease since financial year end 2015. Thanks to their positive operating cash flow, it had allowed them to achieve a very healthy free cash flow over the years. Lee Hain was able to distribute dividends in financial year end 2017 and 2020 as they have ample of cash reserve. All in all, I rate their company 6.1 out of 8, which is about 76.25%, a great financial performance overall. After analyzing Lee Hain's 10 years of financial data, here are my thoughts. Number one is the escalation of costs, including raw material and labor, in line with manpower and rubber root shortages, may impact Lee Hain's profit margins and hinder their growth potential in the future. Based on their latest AGM statement, the breakdown of production costs is about 55-60%, to 60%, 12% and 10% for materials, labor costs and overhead respectively. Hence the rising in costs, especially raw material, will definitely put pressure in their company's margin. Not to mention, the shortage in manpower in the furniture industry has been a major issue for Lee Hain since 2017 which resulted the company to not expand their manufacturing facilities. In order to mitigate this issue, Lee Hain is forced to automate their production, which also means higher overhead costs. Besides that, their company is affected by the fluctuation of foreign exchange, as majority of their sales comes from the North America. This can be justified from their unstable operating profit growth and margins. Lastly, I feel that their inventory turnover will be slower, as consequence with the global shortage of containers. This may suggest more unsold finished units will be stored in their companies, leading to lesser sales recognized for the time being. And that's all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. If you did, make sure you smash the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll be happy to get back to you. With that, I'll see you on the next one.